Hello, everybody. I'm here doing an interview with uh, Jerome Mutter. Hi, I'm Martin. <laughs> Hi, Hello. everyone. So I'm a <clears throat> I'm a biologist and a image uh, analyst, bio image analyst. So yes. we I work in an imaging facility and we we basically make uh, microscopic observations of uh, biological samples, yeah. mainly plants samples. Yep. No, you're you're visiting me here in Boston. Um, you're not from from here though. No, uh, yes, I, I work in France, in the uh, French uh, CMRS. Oh, so it's very kind, kind of you to come all of this way to visit me. Thank you, my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jerome and I have worked together pre previously on Inkscape, uh, developing an extension called the, it's the ImageJ panel extension. Yeah. The idea being is that you can create figures uh, for science papers inside of Inkscape by um, writing the code in the description field, and then it will execute all of the necessary and produce the image in a rectang re rectangle. Um, could you give a brief uh, explanation of how you came to do this extension with me? Yeah, so I wrote uh, previously uh, another uh, figure building software in, in the software ImageJ, and uh, I thought of uh, creating a new version with Inkscape because it would bring a lot of flexibility. So Inkscape would, would bring the flexibility, but we would like to retain uh, reproducibility so that you can reopen your file and then re-execute the code and get the same result, which yeah. is a very important point in building uh, article figures. Yes. So the, so the code remains inside the SVG? Yeah. Each, basically, you have the rendered view of your object. But then you, you also have the, the code, the code history that is uh, used to create this view. Excellent. Yeah, so you, you, you not only can create this uh, code that produces this image, but you can also, I presume, copy and paste these. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if you have an existing uh, code yeah. that generates some view, you can just paste it in the image description, and then Inkscape, the, the extension will render it. Yeah, and include it in, in the document. In, it, it'll be in that space. Yeah. So say, for instance, if you have a, um, a graph produced by R, because I, I think you can run R scripts, right? Yes, first of all, uh, uh, the, f the first target was uh, image J, but then quickly we realized that uh, you could also extend this, extend this concept to different third-party software. Yeah. So, and one very important one was uh, the R uh, Statistical uh, computer. Statistical, yeah. yeah. The uh, the one that we call R R. <laughs> the uh, yeah. So so I believe because what what I've seen on, online on Twitter is that you can take one of these rectangles that are a rendered graph in R. Yeah. Copy it, paste it, and then change the code and yeah. then re-render it. Yeah, that's the point. If you if you do like a similar panels, you can reuse the same code and then then make just a small adjustments, and then it will uh, render the panel differently. So you can have a, like a standard uh, view with a slight differences, but yep. you don't have to rewrite the whole the whole stuff, the whole code. Excellent. Um, so how, how did you come to find me, and and how did I help you? Uh, that's a good question. I was uh, interested in Inkscape for a long time, and then I looked at the Inkscape uh, repository, yep. and also saw a few tweets uh, of yours uh, on Twitter. And uh, that you were uh, offering uh, like uh, paid for work. Yes. And uh, because I had a very limited uh, in knowledge uh, with Inkscape, I thought that this would be the most efficient way to to get into the to get the extension into a working state. Yes. Yeah. So the the way that we organized this uh, paid work was, I didn't do all of the work. I instead almost sort of trained you and also like did the initial implementation? Yes, that's it. I, I first draft, uh, the draft, drafted the idea yeah. briefly and then uh, you gave uh, some uh, very useful advice. Um, but also you created some uh, specific code because uh, I can't remember exactly what, what, how, what was happening, but uh, something was not possible uh, with yeah. the current version of Inkscape. So you, you, yeah, that's right. We targeted yeah. Inkscape the next version yeah, at that stage yeah. because it, 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 we had changed some of the uh, extensions API 
to uh, make this particular extension easier to do. Um, and so it just meant that it wouldn't work with previous versions of Inkscape. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that sometimes happens um, when you get a contract in to say work on some Python, and you realize it's just it will make it, it a lot easier if you can just modify the upstream, the core of Inkscape. Or, yeah, that, yeah, and in this case, that was uh, necessary, I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah, small modification, but it's a, it's a really fun tool. Like I've actually executed some more scripts myself. Okay. So they like, put them in and get them uh, positioned. I don't do science analytics myself. So I'm just playing. Um, but it sounds like the kind of extension that uh, a lot of different scientific fields would be interested in. Yeah, sure. Any 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 scientific uh, field, because, uh, for example, the ImageJ software is uh, useful for uh, microscopists or image uh, analysts, but the R software is useful for basically for everybody. anybody. So yeah. There are so many uh, R libraries that you can use and that you, you can use from Inkscape now. So it is uh, right. Nice. Yes, because you, you have to have the R language installed and all of the prerequisites before you can yes, do, do this. Yes, the extension, the Inkscape extension, will talk to an existing installation of uh, whatever software. Right, right, yeah. uh, and then request uh, an image uh, result uh, from, from the code you type in or paste in. Yeah. And this would then work with any instance software. Would you, would you have the ability to... Right, and I know this sounds perverse, but would you have the ability to write Python inside of this of the image? Did um, yes, but I would not. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, actually, if, if you, I would use the processing part of uh, this extension uh, that uses the processing software, yeah. in in which you can directly type uh, Python. And uh, and then the Python will create a SVG output, and this SVG will be like a pushed to your Inkscape document. I see. So it, it won't just be a rectangle of a of a raster image, which you might get from microscopy. It would be an SVG that would be added in. Yeah, and this is the same for R. You, currently, I think the default is to to get the uh, raster image output of R, yeah. uh, which like always work. Uh, but you could also have a R uh, outputting SVG, and this is uh, sometimes a good thing to do, sometimes not, because if you have like a thousands of points of R objects in your graph, yeah. it's a much much more uh, memory efficient to uh, like a performance efficient. Yes, to to have the raster image yes. rather than the individual uh, vector object. Yeah, it's one thing I've noticed about. Uh, some of the R outputs for graphs is that they are not the most efficient SVGs. Uh, mostly, I think, because the SVG spec is complicated and you have to uh, have studied it in order to take advantage of all of the fun functionality. Um, do, you, do you have a set resolution that you export these raster images at? Uh, yes. Yes, we have. Yes. So by default, I, I take the default uh, SVG document resolution, yep. uh, but sometimes this is not enough. Uh, for example, if you want to zoom in, then you don't have a natural resolution. So yeah. in the extension, you, you have a, like a multiplier factor that is built in. Ah, so yeah. you can increase this, and then it will uh, scale the resolution with this factor. So the, the, the number of pixels packed into the same size box yeah. will increase. Yeah. yeah. Because I can imagine if, if this is going into a pa paper and the paper is going to be print printed. I know that most scientific papers are not actually printed out, but I can imagine somebody making posters or, or banners when they go to conferences or something. And for those, you would probably want a much higher resolution. Yeah, sure. Yeah. This is especially true for line art, like uh, graphs. Yes. So then you want to push maybe to a factor of uh, four or five. So you get five times the, the standard uh, SVG resolution. So that when you zoom in, you still have nice lines and nice fonts. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, so what would, you, what would you say is the is the uh, difficulty with using the image table panel plugin? Um, but for, first of all, it depends on third party software. So you have to also you have to master a little bit of Inkscape, and you have to master the third party uh, scripting language. So that's uh, the most difficult right. part. And then for the for the user uh, interaction point of view, you have to go to the extension menu and then fire the extension dialog and from there press the OK button. So that's uh, several uh, steps. Yes. Uh, 
So there's there's a there's a, a lot of steps you have to do in order to get it into the, the right yes. state. Yes. Yeah. So you do you have f future plans for the image shape panel extension? Yes, uh, a lot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we actually we actually talked about it bri briefly. All of the um, fun things that we could add into Inkscape to make this particular extension easier to, to do. Yes, it would be it would be nice to have a dedicated uh, side panel with uh, with buttons that would trigger the extensions. Yeah, uh, that'd be really cool. and that that would be cool for this one, but also probably for many other uh, workflows, many other uh, yeah. extensions. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of extensions where like a dedicated panel just for that extension that's slightly dockable in mm -hmm. the same way as every other panel mm -hmm. would be incredible. I think mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm just thinking of, of even light path effects don't even have. Like panels that they can, the dedicated panels for changing their attributes. For yeah. Yes, uh, one, one other stuff that uh, would be very useful is to have the syntax highlighting in inside the, the text area that uh, displays yes. the code, because uh, the default font inside there is uh, very small. And then if you would have a language specific syntax highlighting, would be a problem in English. Yeah, yes, it would be very nice because we're currently using the description field, so yeah. we're kind of like hacking by using an existing field, which obviously doesn't have syntax highlighting because it's not expected that the code would belong there. Yeah. Um, but I suppose if, you, if you're writing your own graphical user interface, then you can choose to have um, highlighting. Yeah, that, 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 that'd yeah. be nice. Uh, then the last uh, very important stuff is that it's also nicely integrated with the connectors tool. Ah, yes. And uh, then you can link uh, several panels and then give each panel a bit of the code that is necessary for steps, like uh, creating steps inside the workflow. Right. And then render each uh, individual steps. Right. This is this is uh, this works already with the current state of the connectors. So I'm I'm really looking forward to see how this works with the next uh, iteration of the connectors. Yeah, too. yeah. I, 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 for context, I'm uh, I've half written a new connectors tool and I'm looking for fun funding to complete that in the coming year uh, but it changes the very way in which connectors are saved so um, your assumptions about what the connectors look, look, look like will have to change inside the extension um, but it sounds like it's a very simple pro process as long as you can make that connection between those two objects then yeah. you can yeah. process it. Actually I, I've uh, followed the connectors to development Right. <laughs> and I have some code that is ready for the up upgrade. Maybe not. Um, it will maybe not be like a back compatible with the right. first version, but that, that's fine. Have, have you yeah. found the uh, the videos that I put out to be useful for development? Your videos? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Because I uh, because this is a, like a new feature, yeah. so I also want to to make use of uh, the newest features available. Yeah, which, uh, for example, the multi-page stuff is, uh, really makes sense to create a, a, a set of figures on multiple pages. Yes. And um, yeah, so it, it's very important for me to, to follow the, the very last and uh, very next steps. Of so the, so yeah, every week you can learn a, a little bit, and it's different. There are so many features uh, so that you wouldn't uh, learn uh, all of them in, in a training session or in, in even if you dedicate like a two, yes. one or two days learning Inkscape, you you will, you will not be able to learn every feature. So. Oh no no no! Uh, there's there a develop like the, the, the in the developer community, we actually have a joke that there is nobody that knows all of the code code base, uh -huh. and in the same way, there's nobody that knows all of the features, yeah. and so much so that I will literally go through the code and read a piece of code and go, oh. I didn't know that was a feature, and then I'll load Inkscape and I'll try it out and be like, "Oh, that's really cool! I never knew that existed." And it and it feels as almost like nobody knew that existed. That was put there a long time ago. Or maybe you wrote it and you forgot about it. Well, that that <laughs> is actually less likely because <laughs> um, most of my work with Inkscape has actually been Python code yeah. until very very recently. So uh, the C plus plus code. Would have to be within the last three years I okay. think, for for it to, to be the new format. And I would I'm looking forward for extensions to provide more uh, mm. access to uh, the core of uh, Inkscape as well. Yeah, we we need to progress our Inks uh, uh, extension game. So looking forward. I know, <laughs> excellent. I, I mean, it'll take time. Features and priorities and being what they are. 
Um, but I'm always interested to hear from people like yourself who are um, exploring areas of Inkscape's users. Mm -hmm. Like the scientific figures is an entire workflow that is different from many other Inkscape users. Um, and so it's, it's important for us to be able to um, hear the work that you're doing and the needs that you have um, because they will be different. Yeah, yeah. Um, so thank you very much for joining me for this impromptu and short interview. Thank um, you, Martin. <laughs> thank you for uh, Inkscape. Oh, yeah. I, 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 Inkscape was... Very oh, welcome. There, yeah, there are many, many Inkscape developers. Sure. Um, but thank you for the, the image extension. I, I, I recommend it to people uh, on Twitter a lot um, because it just seems like an exciting uh, tool that a person can use. Thank you. Awesome.